span. Washington Journal continues. It was on Thursday that the president spoke in a press conference addressing the issues concerning December and the attempted uh, terrorism attack from that flight to New York. Here's some of what he had to say. And that's why we must communicate clearly to Muslims around the world that Al-Qaeda offers nothing except a bankrupt vision of misery and death, including the murder of fellow Muslims, while the United States stands with those who seek justice and progress. To advance that progress, we've sought new beginnings with Muslim communities around the world, one in which we engage on the basis of mutual interest and mutual respect and work together to fulfill the aspirations that all people share, to get an education, to work with dignity, to live in peace and security. That's what America believes in. That's the vision that is far more powerful than the hatred of these violent extremists. Joining us now is Nihad Awad. He is the uh, executive director for the Council of American Islamic Relations. Uh, from the president's statement talking about new beginnings and, and, and related subjects, where does the government need to go as far as what happened in December and from heading on out from there? Well, good morning. Thanks good morning. for having me first. Uh, uh, when I saw the president speak on that, uh, I felt assured that the president has it together. Um, the president acknowledged that the information about this uh, terrorist was in the system, uh, but was not acted on. Uh, and I think that that gives us an assurance that the government knows a lot of information, but it needs to use this information. Security agencies need to communicate among themselves. And therefore, the extra measures that we see today uh, can be enhanced and can be more effective. We, we have questions about the effectiveness of, of you know, the fact that uh, profiling is being instituted uh, against uh, religious minorities and, uh, and ethnic uh, people. But the information that we have, as the president said, could have helped the government prevent this guy from even coming to the, to the, to the United States. The second thing I was assured when I heard the president is uh, the fact that he wants to work with the Muslim community here and abroad and that the Al-Qaeda uh, vision is a vision of ba bankruptcy. It does not represent uh, the Muslim world or Muslims and uh, the overwhelming majority of Muslims reject its vision and its view uh, to uh, events and a life and even religion itself. You said you had questions about profiling. What are chief among those questions? Well, you know, first of all, the, the list of the countries. Uh, 13 uh, countries out of 14 uh, are Muslim and Arab countries. Uh, I think there are more countries that have terrorism problems and even terrorists who reached our borders, including Richard Reed, uh, because of whom all of us who travel around the world have to take off our shoes and put them on the conveyor belt. Um, but Britain is not on that list. Uh, there, is, there is extremist uh, problem in, in, in Britain as well. So I think the criteria of putting countries or not putting countries, I think it has to be re-examined. Because as the president said in his uh, different speeches to the Muslim world, whether from uh, um, uh, Turkey or from Cairo, that he wants to reach the Muslim world at large. And uh, singling out Muslim countries and Arab countries uh, for this problem, I think it causes us to lose more hearts and minds that we need to win. So if they have to be re-examined, what standards should be used in that re-examination? I think the, 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 the standards should be uh, across the board in terms of any country uh, that has tourism or extremism problem um, has to be put on the list. Uh, and also we have to judge behavior. We cannot judge uh, uh, the skin color or ethnic background or religious affiliation because what the incidents that and, and, and complaints that we receive uh, through our offices nationwide indicate that uh, security agents are uh, targeting some Muslims just because of their appearance. And I believe this is, this is ineffective. In fact, it is counterproductive. It communicates the wrong message. Also, it gives the apparent uh, a sense of security, but you know, all it takes is Al Qaeda will just exclude these 14 countries and recruit the next generation of, of suicide bombers from other countries. So we need not to play catch up all the time with Al Qaeda. If, uh, if an expansion of that list to all countries that have problems with terrorism happens, then how do you make that work effectively at an airport where people have to go one by one through an examination point? Well, again, all of us now, after, after September 11th, we go through metal detectors, no exception to the rule. 
And I think all of us feel that we're all, uh, you know, uh, treated fairly and, and, and equally. And the security uh, agents will not miss any person who has to go through the security. No exception made to anybody. Uh, and I think this way, uh, you do not miss any chance. We do not want, again, uh, to, to fall in, 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 uh, in the position where we miss someone uh, just because we did not anticipate. Uh, terrorism cuts across the board and does not belong to any faith community or any skin color. And we have to be prepared and we have to have an open mind. Uh, but our measures have to be effective. We have to base our decision on behavior analysis, not looks or ethnic background or religious affiliation. What about technology as far as full battle body scanners and the like? Well, technology can help. In fact, technology has been one of our best assets. We need more sophisticated uh, bomb detecting machines. Uh, we need to, uh, to get more uh, uh, bomb uh, sniffing dogs. And we have to get better trained uh, security agents in airports. But most importantly, the, the watch list has to be more effective. Today, the watch list is clogged with irrelevant information. Uh, the system is overwhelmed with irrelevant information that even when you get information about Omar Farouk Abdul Muttalib, it is there among maybe hundreds of thousands, if not maybe millions of names, and you do not have enough people to deal with it. Therefore, the, the watch list has to be reduced to the most known and effective uh, criteria that judges behavior, but not political affiliations. I mean, remember, um, on the watch list, the late Senator Ted Kennedy was on it. Nelson Mandela was on it. For God's sake, why do we have these people on that list? And if you have similar names and uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of names on this list, then you will not have enough manpower to go through the list and detect the actual suspects that need to be put, for example, on the no-fly list. Our guest is Nahar Awad. He is the executive director of the Council for American Islamic Relations. He'll be with us until 8.30 to talk about a Muslim reaction here in the U.S. to the alleged terror attack. Uh, if you want to ask him questions, 202-737-0002 for Democrats, 202-737-0001 for Republicans, and uh, 202-628-0205 for Independents. Uh, journal at cspan.org, the website, Twitter, uh, uh, cspanwj is how you reach us there. Rasmussen reports a couple of days ago put out a poll concerning the topic of ethnic profiling specifically. And here's what it showed. The headline says that 59% of those that were polled favor racial ethnic profiling for airline security. As far as the public's reaction, what do you think that number kind of says to you? It, it, it is unfortunate. Whenever we, uh, we go through this difficult and challenging time, emotions will be high and people uh, may just have a knee-jerk reaction to security, uh, legitimate security concerns. But again, our nation has learned so many lessons. You cannot uh, racially profile people and just provide a false sense of security. It may satisfy some people, but does not resolve the problem. In fact, you create a bigger problem. You need to contain this problem and break it down and work on it effectively. You need not to enlarge it, expand it, and make it widespread and involve many innocent people in this uh, wide net. So. I believe racial profiling is not effective, and security experts will tell you, and even uh, members of the Justice Department and the Homeland Security Department will tell you that profiling has never worked. All it takes is one incident to prove you wrong, and we have many incidents that have proven us wrong. Have you uh, spoken to anybody in the administration about the specific list that was laid out as far as those that would be uh, specially looked at? We have sent a letter to the acting director of uh, um, TSA, Transportation Security Administration, and we asked to clarify this, uh, uh, this, these new measures, and uh, just to make sure that uh, ethnic and religious profiling is not a factor and it is not a policy. Um, we was, were still uh, waiting for an answer. Uh, also, uh, I wrote a, uh, a letter to President Obama a few days ago uh, asking him to take uh, measures to assure Muslim Americans that they are not targeted, or Muslims per se, they're not targeted just because they're Muslim. And I believe that the President in his speech, in a way, uh, you know, is assuring us, but we need that assurance also to be communicated through the system so that average travelers do not feel to be, need not to be uh, uh, intimidated or singled out 
just because they're Muslim. Have there been specific policies put into place that you feel are racial profiling or specific incidents that you can tell us about that were registered at TSA that you would classify as racial profiling? There have been incidents uh, reported to us. Uh, some of them have been shown on the media, uh, including a, a Muslim lady who wears hijab or the head, uh, head cover. Uh, traveling from uh, uh, Dallas Airport, uh, I believe, to California. She was taken out of the, the line, and uh, she was told that because of her hijab or head, uh, headdress, she has to be uh, uh, gone uh, through extra scrutiny. Uh, she was patted down, uh, and, you know, someone was just, you know, touching her body in an inappropriate way uh, before, in front of other people. And she believed that she was singled out. And when she asked why was she, she taken out of the line, out of all those who were waiting in the uh, security line, she was told because of her hijab. And she said, but I have been traveling for so many years. Why, why now? They said, this is a new policy. That triggered us to communicate with the TSA. A similar incident um, uh, happened to a lady who was trying to enter the United States, uh, visiting her husband in Ohio. Uh, she was uh, held questioned about uh, her uh, you know, belief and her dress, and she believes that she was prevented even from coming to the United States from Canada because of her job. Uh, this is an allegation. Uh, we, we asked for cl clarification, and I hope that the uh, clarification will be in the negative that this is not the policy, because we need to assure, assure the Muslim traveling public that they're not the target of this discriminatory policy. Our first call for our guest comes from Detroit on our Democrats line. David, go ahead. Uh, yes, I really uh, don't understand in regards to uh, the so much heightened security at the airports when this uh, alleged terrorist, Abdul Muttalib, flew from Nigeria. There was an intelligence breakdown, came from a third world country, and he was inbound coming into Detroit. And now we're all being made to suffer with all this extra screening. But my question is to Mr. Awad, as has he written uh, TSA or the administration and given any suggestions in regards to uh, how we can both uh, balance our civil liberties concerns with the uh, with the uh, the security needs, because I don't think that we need these long lines, the more uh, uh, body scanners, and and trying to uh, profile people of Middle Eastern or African background, because I personally don't think it's going to make us safer at all. Thank you. Uh, when we uh, when we wrote to the acting director of TSA asking for clarification after this complaint came to us, uh, we a, we offered our help and, and our support for for the government uh, to make sure that uh, our airports, uh, borders, and uh, ports are safe and even the traveling uh, public, including you know all of us, uh, are safe. But we need to have effective uh, measures that are ba ba based on. Uh, you know, uh, scientific and logical along lines. But I think uh, if we introduce more sophisticated technology to detect uh, uh, bombs and explosives, I think that would help. Uh, also, train uh, TSA uh, agents uh, uh, to judge behavior, but not the looks of people. That would also help uh, to um, make the watching list uh, or the watch list uh, more effective. And as I said earlier, it's clogged with so many irrelevant information and so many people are on the list, should not be on the list. Uh, that list has to be re-examined. Uh, those who are on it uh, illegitimately should have a way to redress that. And I think the TSA should improve that uh, uh, measure. Uh, I, when I travel, I, 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 I listen to people, I visit mosques, and I'm shocked uh, on, on the kind of people and how many people are on the watch list. Uh, it's, it's embarrassing to them, uh, to them. It's, it's humiliating. Uh, for example, you know, physicians, uh, business people, um, non-political people, uh, religious clergy, uh, they just feel that there is no need for them to be on the list. They have been uh, citizens of the country for a long time, and many of them are born and raised here. Uh, they don't pose any threat or any danger to the system, and that's why uh, they feel that they have been there maybe for political reasons. So that list, has, I think, has to be re-examined. 
and eventually you will have a, a list of people who deserve to be there and when you get this list the security agencies will have a, a more time and they will spend the uh, the, the, the needed resources uh, to uh, go after the suspected people and that's I think will give a clear sense of security and safety for our nation. Linda, New Jersey, Republican line, Khalid. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, Dad. Yeah, I'd like to say, um, first of all, I'm an American Muslim. I was born in America. I'm a Muslim. And I'm very concerned about a couple of things. And I would just like to say this real fast before I listen to your comment. First thing is this, this term, war on terror. I believe this is war on Islamic rage because if you look in the last 50 years, I would like you to give me an estimate how many Muslims have been killed by European or colonial powers. And the second thing is, third, second thing is, I think that Muslims throughout the, uh, this country should boycott all the airlines and don't fly on them, period, until we address this issue because it's not a war on Islamic terror. It's a war on post-colonialism. I'd like to hear you say, um, you know, give your comment on this. And I also want to ask one more question. Uh, are you on the terrorist list? Or have you ever been, have you ever been, uh, um, searched or, 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 or incapacitated by security measures, and they also know who you are. Thank you. Um, I understand the, the frustration where the caller is coming from. I, I said several times that, uh, unfortunately, there is a growing perception um, among many in the Muslim world that the war on terrorism uh, is a war on Islam. And I think this is very dangerous. We have to do all we can uh, as a nation, as a government, as, as leaders in this society to assure the Muslim world that, that the war on terrorism, which was invented uh, in the past eight years, is not a war on Islam. And, and we have to work very hard to alleviate the anxiety and frustration that uh, uh, the caller has because it is in the interest of, of, of the United States, the Muslim world and all to make sure that the, the, the war on the terrorists is really a war on the terrorists. Um, and I think there are some, some legitimate grievances uh, in, the, in the Muslim world that need to be addressed uh, methodically, logically, in a calm way, in, 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 a, in, in a negotiating way, as President Obama extended his hand, uh, whether from uh, his, his uh, election campaign uh, efforts to his inauguration speech, to his speech in, in, uh, in uh, Turkey, to Cairo. He has been personally um, invested in communicating with the Muslim world and extending a hand to them. I think this is the right approach, this is the right tone. But also many people in the Muslim world have, seen, have not seen effective change in the policies of our country. For example, the war in Iraq, I hope it is winding down. But they're disturbed that the war in, uh, in Afghanistan is escalating. Why don't we what, ne negotiate a peace settlement? Why, why don't we just de-escalate the tension and try to um, um, work with people who will contain the situation? Um, the president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karazai, and others' job has become more difficult when more civilians are being killed in the attacks, drone attacks and others, when sometimes schools are being uh, bombed and so many in innocent people are killed. We have to reduce and eliminate uh, civilian casualties in the war against the terrorists. And the second thing is... Um, you asked if you would boycott airports. I, um, I, again, I see the frustration. Uh, um, Minorities in this country have suffered uh, uh, discrimination and uh, stigmatization uh, when, when we were, when we, uh, were in, in, in times of tension, whether after Pearl Harbor, uh, the first you know, World War I, World War II, and even throughout so many uh, decades of discrimination against uh, African Americans. Uh, I'm sure leaders have called maybe for boycotts uh, at one point or another. I believe today we just have to communicate effectively with our government through the media, working with people of other faith communities to make sure that there is no stigmatization, there is no alienation, there is no targeting of a minority just because of who they are. Um, and, you know, I personally do not support a boycott because we need not to hurt our economy. We need, we need, we need to help our economy to grow stronger and bigger. 
there are always better ways to, to communicate our frustration, meet with your members of Congress, uh, speak uh, with elected officials, be engaged. And as Muslims, we're supposed to be uh, positive and positively engaging other people. However, I, I understand the frustration. As far as whether I am on the watch list, uh, uh, whenever I travel and I come back, uh, yes, I get secondary check. And uh, it's, it's, uh, I get uh, upset when I see that. Uh, and not only that, as I said uh, earlier to Pedro, that almost uh, major leaders in the Muslim community, business leaders, uh, physicians, professionals, they go uh, uh, you know, through secondary check uh, in the airports when they arrive and they, they get questioned. Uh, many of them are on the um, watch list. And I think this is the wrong way to, to deal with the Muslim community. And that's why we're hoping that President Obama will take a second look at the watch list, the way so many people are put there unfairly, and give them a, a, a measure to redress it so that they all feel included in the society and they're not just targeted because they're Muslim. A statement from uh, Doug Walty on Twitter. He says, our enemies are Muslim terrorist combatants, so giving extra attention to young Muslim men is logical. Well, again, I, I see where, where he's coming from that... Uh, um, the, the, there is a threat that we have to deal with, uh, but again, we, we, need, we need, when we deal with security issues, we have to be open-minded, we have, we have to be careful uh, not to uh, make the, the problem bigger. Uh, yes, there, are, there is radicalization among some uh, young Muslims who are being recruited by Al-Qaeda. This number is very, very small. Uh, we need not to make it bigger. Uh, second, all it takes, if we focus only on one ethnic or religious community, all it takes is Al-Qaeda to recruit someone from someone else, or maybe other extremist groups who are not Muslim uh, to, to attack uh, our, our, our country from within or outside, and uh, we will just uh, play catch-up after that. For example, when Timothy McVeigh uh, bombed the federal building in Oklahoma City, uh, most of the attentions and the, the programming of our minds have been focused on Middle Easterners. So the one who was arrested first was an Arab American in the Oklahoma uh, City airport. And Timothy McVeigh uh, was uh, in jail, not because he bombed the federal building, but he was in jail because of traffic violation. So it was an act of God that Timothy McVeigh was in custody for other reason, then after the investigation, our government discovered that the bomber was not a Muslim, was not an Arab, he was white, a, a white Caucasian. And, and, but we did not target white Americans after that, and we should not. So all it takes is, if we miss it once, uh, we're going to pay a heavy price as a nation, and we should not do that. Wyndham, Connecticut, Steve on our independent line. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Pedro. Salam alaikum, Mr. Awad. Um, well, you, you mentioned Afghanistan and the killing of civilians. It's, it's pretty well known in the military now that they're, they're, uh, they're saying that they've killed children because the U.S. pays out big bucks. So there's a, I'd like to see, and they know that the Muslims bury the bodies within 24 hours. So there's a little problem going on there. But that's not why I'm calling. I think I think I think you're a lot of your points are valid. I think President Obama needs to physically and and, and visibly reach out to the American Muslim community. There's five over five thousand Muslims serving in the U.S. military. You know we need those people. We don't want to scare them away. We need those people. And but I'm 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 in concern about racial profiling. I think. Peter King in New York has a point. You know, when, when we're looking for white supremacists, we don't go down to Harlem to look for white supremacists. So that's all I got to say. I, I, I agree with the caller. Uh, again, I think it is important to hear um, Muslim Americans' point of view. Um, and sometimes uh, these views are not, uh, are not heard. So I'm, I'm happy to hear uh, my fellow Muslims uh, speaking out, but I also encourage them to communicate with elected officials, to, uh, to speak to faith um, you know, leaders and, and civic leaders, right? Uh, and I think our perspective is needed because we try to look at the bigger picture um, to help our government deal with this issue. 
the, uh, our government and our nation needs the Muslim voice, the Muslim uh, contribution because of the, uh, of the connection with the Muslim world, the understanding of the history, the, tra the tradition, the culture, and, and because of our loyalty to the United States, we can do a more effective job. And I think that the Muslim input in this is very, very crucial and should not be sidelined. And uh, I hope that uh, President Obama will reach out to the Muslim community, include it in the process, not only of uh, you know, giving reaction to events, but planning and being proactive because their contribution is very, very crucial in dealing with the 1.5 billion Muslims around the world. On Democrats' line, Jacksonville, Florida. Bilal, go ahead. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Awai, good morning, and uh, also good morning, good morning. to you, uh, Jose. Um, Mr. Awai, uh, I understand you writing a letter to TSA and also writing a letter to President Obama. Uh, about the situation of profiling and so forth. But Tom Brokaw mentioned something uh, on television last week. Uh, he said this. He said that one of the problems that we have with the situation is that the Muslim world and CAR are not reaching out to the mosque and the masajid in America and around the world to the leaders, the Islamic leaders, the Iman, that they to speak to their congregation about this problem of terrorism. You see, uh, we talk much about how religions are being hijacked by people who are uh, out to the extreme. And they, are, in fact, fact have it that more Muslims are killed by these terrorists. They are going into masses on Friday and blowing up Muslim worshippers in Jumat prayer. Now these are Muslims killing Muslims. So we should attack this problem also within the Muslim community. CAR and other organizations and imams should be contacting each other to teach this in their masters to stop this problem that we have. Mr. Watt. Thank you. Um, this, is, this is an unfortunate reality that there is a political instability political violence uh, in some parts of the Muslim world. And that's why we all have to work together. Uh, I think part of the problem is also internal, that we need to, uh, as, as the, the caller said, uh, um, remind our, 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 our uh, fellow Muslims that our religion is a religion of diversity. Um, in fact, the United States uh, Muslim community <coughs> is the most diverse uh, Muslim community probably in the world. Uh, we, we, we are uh, happy and proud of our faith, but also we celebrate our diversity every day. Whenever you walk into a mosque in the United States, as if you are walking into the United Nations, you see all kinds of people there. They are brothers and sisters, and I think that's the essence of Islam. Unfortunately, because of ignorance, lack of understanding of Islam, also by some Muslims, uh, and the, uh, how easy sometimes people are manipulated and swayed uh, to, uh, to not tolerate differences, differences of opinion over issues. It is a lack of understanding, it is the lack of sophistication, and yes, leadership have to be involved. In the United States, I believe we have a great model in the, in the, in the leadership that we have in mosques, in imams, uh, the, the communication among so many groups. And I believe that American Muslims can be and can serve as a great model uh, to the Muslim world in many areas. Um, and, and I, you know, whenever we have uh, political stability, you see exist, uh, coexistence. And whenever you have disturbances, political violence uh, uh, in, 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 a, in a country, you see extremism, but uh, and unfortunately, all what we see sometimes on television is negative in news. And uh, the, the, you know, the say is, uh, if it bleeds, it leads. We hardly see news coverage uh, at the beauty and and serenity and tranquility of the 1.5 uh, mil billion Muslims around the world. How they lead a, a, a life of of honor, dignity, hard work. Uh, believing in progress, believing in getting their kids a uh, good education, uh, getting uh, jobs with dignity, working hard. All of these values that, that we live as, Mus as Muslims around the world does not get communicated. Unfortunately, the violent incidents here and there seem to define uh, the image of Muslims uh, in, in, in the U.S. media.
Uh, Nahada Wad is our guest for about 15 more minutes, and our next call is Bob on our Republican line, Cincinnati. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. I really don't have a question. I just have a comment. I would like for all listeners to pay close attention to a book, Muslim Mafia, and in particular, Chapter 8. With that, I'll uh, hang up and uh, let Mr. Awad respond. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's a book that was based on stolen documents. Uh, from uh, from our organization, uh, it's uh, written by uh, extremist uh, individuals, and it's just designed to sell book based on false uh, propaganda against the Muslim community and some of the Muslim organizations. Who were the documents stolen by? Uh, stolen by uh, several organizations, including ours. Uh, there was a spy who uh, infiltrated one of our offices, uh, came to our national office, uh, pretended to be a Muslim. Uh, pre pretended to be an intern, uh, stole documents. Uh, we, we sued this individual and the judge ruled in our favor. Uh, so uh, that shows our, our community and our organizations are open. We welcome interns to, to be trained in, 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 in the civil rights work that we do. But unfortunately, sometimes people exploit this, they manipulate it, and they try to drive a wedge between the Muslim community and the larger society. What was the purpose of the book? Um, I think just to sell a book, um, um, and uh, because it's a legal case now, the judge ruled in our favor, and probably I cannot comment on more details. Uh, New York City? Fran on our independent line. Yeah, hi. This question is for Mr. Ahad. Uh, Mr. Ahad, uh, I know you mentioned Timothy McVeigh. However, uh, I have a problem with that because since that time, all the terrorist attacks have been have 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 been instituted by extremist Muslims. Uh, what do you say to that? Um, again, probably yeah, what we see on the news is uh, um, um, attempted uh, violent uh, actions by by uh, some Muslims or those who claim to be to be Muslims. What I would like you to uh, to be assured is. The overwhelming majority of Muslims here and all over the world condemn these acts and they don't represent our faith. Our faith is great faith, uh, faith of one billion uh, people or more. Uh, it is a mainstream uh, community and the, the acts of these individuals should not reflect on all of us. Second, yes, there are, uh, there are terrorist attacks uh, that took place in the United States at the hands of non-Muslims uh, even after Timothy McVeigh. Uh, so many attempts on abortion doctors and abortion clinics uh, have claimed the lives of uh, people uh, for political reasons. If we follow the definition of terrorism, these are terrorist at, uh, acts uh, taken and conducted at the hands of people of non-Muslim. I think my point is terrorism knows no religion, no ethnic background, no border. Uh, Unfortunately, what we see on television uh, is we see uh, political instability in some places, and, and we, 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 we recognize that, and we condemn it. Uh, Denise, on our Democrats line, Lodi, California, you are next. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Go ahead. Okay, good morning. Um, my, I have a question and also a, a comment. Uh, my comment... Can you hear me? Go ahead. Okay. My comment is, um, it seems like um, the war is not against Muslim, the war is, or Islam, the war is against Islam extremists. So, uh, again, if we look, we see, uh, and, and the mosques, sometimes they have inflammatory rhetoric, um, instead of helping people or denouncing Muslim extremists. So I'm trying to find out what have you been doing to, you know, prevent that from happening. Because I see a lot of complaints, a lot of worries, but what action have you made to prevent that? Because to me, I feel like the good Muslim people should rise up against the extremists, because the extremists, are the problem. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I see where you come from and I agree with you. And let me just uh, share with you this. Um, traditionally and historically, 
the American Muslim community, the leadership, the organizations have been uh, systematic and uh, uh, consistent when it comes to condemning uh, violent extremism and terrorism. Um, and whenever there is a, a, uh, an event uh, that warrants to be condemned, we do. In fact, a lot of our statements are usually condemnation, assurance, uh, assuring the, the general public um, and everybody that the Muslim community stands clear uh, and unequivocal when it comes to the issue of extremism and terrorism. In fact, we have coordinated a religious verdict or uh, what we call fatwa by the uh, national uh, jurist uh, panel of the United States who are Muslim to condemn violent extremism and terrorism and we had it signed uh, by hundreds of thousands of individuals and uh, hundreds of institutions in the United States and that is really a clear statement I do not see uh, inflammatory rhetoric coming from uh, American Muslim mosques I think our community seems to be uh, always in the mainstream probably there is an exception to the rule uh, but they do not reflect uh, on, on our community um, and also we are uh, taking proactive initiatives uh, we are uh, conducting now an initiative and I hope that we can announce it soon uh, anti-radicalization initiative uh, just to make sure that our young people um, are on track when it comes to their priorities, their understanding. Uh, the overwhelming majority of our people are in good shape, but also we are trying to monitor the situation, make sure that we are ahead of the curve, uh, theologically, politically, uh, and provide counseling for those who may have tendencies uh, to be recruited by extremists. Uh, these are, uh, you know, we said in, in, in previous uh, uh, news conferences that uh, we have a small problem. It is very small. We're going to deal with it effectively. And to us, it is, it is uh, serious enough that it warrants attention and we're going to take care of it. So just, you know, my ultimate uh, uh, goal here is our community is a, a patriotic community, uh, very involved, vibrant, and it needs not to be feared or suspected. Uh, the Muslim community is a partner uh, in, in making America better and stronger. Uh, it's, how do you square that in early December with the five uh, youth, uh, youths that were uh, detained in Pakistan, here in the Washington area? Right. Uh, how do you square your thoughts on, you, you call it a small problem and you say that you're ahead of it, but then we have instances coming here from even from D.C. that's happening. And right. what does that mean for the American public at large when these kind of things happen? Well, uh, the... Speaking of the, of the five young Americans who have been arrested in, in, in Pakistan, it was the families who came to us and communicated with us their, their, their fear about the disappearance of their five kids. And we, uh, they wanted to communicate with the government and we facilitated that uh, meeting with the, with the FBI in the presence of lawyers. Uh, we realized uh, the shock that the community has and the the, the parents uh, have uh, about the disappearance and they did not see any sign of radicalization in their kids uh, and again they, these kids are, have not been charged with any crime yet to my knowledge um, but because of this and others we wanted to deal with this issue uh, to make sure that our kids those who go on the internet um, have answers at home have answers in the community and they are open and they com communicate and they speak their mind and we give them a sense of direction uh, and a sense of priority and understanding so that they lead a productive and constructive life let me say this uh, al-qaeda and other extremist groups if you see their video propagandas they uh, they try to um, exploit uh, the legitimate grievances that people have around the world um, in, in, especially among, among Muslims. They try to appeal to the sense of injustice that many people have. And I think f it is important for us a as a nation to look at the bigger issue and work for peace and stability, reduce tension, resolve conflicts, to drag the, 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 the carpet from underneath these groups is really to work on, on peace. Um, Al-Qaeda today is trying to recruit people who do not have uh, past terrorist uh, history or affiliations and that's the element of surprise that's why we need to work 
with the majority of Muslims around the world who reject Al-Qaeda's vision of death and misery uh, to make sure that uh, they are singled out, they are isolated, they will remain to be uh, small and they will not succeed to reach out to the Muslim uh, young people. So to do that here in the United States, we're working on an initiative to educate our uh, young people, to empower uh, leaders in the community, imams, uh, uh, families, provide counseling, uh, and above all, a sense of belonging and engagement in the society. And I think, you know, hopefully this will come soon and, uh, we, you know, will, uh, it will be effective. Uh, next call is from Ashland, Virginia, on our Republican line. Hugh, good morning. Good morning. Related to profiling and technology, they just had an incident in the area airport the other day where a guy went under the security ropes to kiss his girlfriend goodbye. They can't identify either one up to the minute. We have fingerprints. Everyone has a different fingerprint. Everybody now has a different iris print they found. Everybody has different DNA. Everybody supposedly has a different voice print. Why are we allowing anybody getting on any plane without knowing who they are to begin with? And then if there's a watch list, if there's thousands on it, the fingerprint, the iris, the voice print, the DNA should certainly uh, see who's who real quick. Mr. Watt. The, there are security lapses and, uh, you know, there will be no 100% 100, uh, 100 uh, uh, foolproof uh, system, but we have to do our best. It is very unfortunate uh, uh, to, you know, to, to discover that sometimes a, a, a small mistake like this, when the guard leaves his post even for a few seconds, that someone can slip uh, uh, and, and, and trigger security alert and maybe shutting down the airport for, for, for long hours and uh, impede the, uh, the ability for people to travel and cause delays and cancellation and, and, and this panic. So, you know, but I agree with you that if there is scientific data um, uh, in the system uh, and that, again, data is not overwhelming, it's not just irrelevant information, but we need the accurate information based on, 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 on which we can uh, you know, uh, monitor behavior of people, and that I think will 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 reduce the possibility of missing the next terrorist who will slip uh, through the system because we uh, and our resources are consumed in irrelevant information. Uh, one more call, Walter of Maryland, a deal on our independent line. Hi, Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nahad, I'd like to thank you and uh, the various staff across the nation of care who do an excellent job of representing. Uh, Islam, uh, in the outreach as well uh, to the greater community. I know I speak for millions of Americans who are Muslim and non-Muslims who appreciate what you do and your staff do under immense pressure from the neocon uh, and right-wing uh, faction in our society. Two issues very quickly. How would you address the lexicon that's being used uh, to describe Islam in terms of terrorism now? Uh, the talking heads and the uh, news writers who write the one-liners uh, use the Muslim extremists, uh, radical Islamists, what would be a, a, a better substitute for, for those types of terminology? That's the first question. Next question I have for you is, if President Obama's staff call you today, he desperately needs a good news story for the Muslim community. If Rahm Emanuel or someone from the security staff called you and said, look, Dr. Nihad, we need a good news story for the Muslim community. We hear about the truck bombers, we hear about the, the, uh, the uh, five Americans who left to bomb in, in Pakistan. I need a good news story from you. What is the good news, overarching good news story from the Muslim community that you would pass on to your staff that could assure him and the American public that the Muslims, by and large, 90%, 99% of us are God-fearing, law-abiding citizens? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for uh, uh, your uh, praise of care. Um, first of all, I think uh, terminology is very important. Um, I, I feel disheartened sometimes when I see talking heads uh, over some networks uh, uh, using Islamic terminology uh, in an offensive way and misleading way. Uh, I do not know if they really intend uh, what they say or not, but eventually they're making the problem bigger, uh, they're uh, alienating Muslims, they are misinforming the public about uh, uh, the, the description of things and even the analysis and eventually they make the problem worse. Uh, for example, I think if we encourage profiling and if it becomes systemic and, and there is more support to it, 
then we are handing a victory to Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda is praying and exploiting the, the grievances of Muslims and they're trying to recruit people based on their legitimate grievances to say, uh, listen, uh, the United States is discri discriminating against Muslims because they're Muslims. Look, Muslims are being uh, pulled out of lines in, in airports just because they're Muslim. So that makes the point of Al-Qaeda to recruit more people more people who have a sense of injustice. So let's not do the PR for Al-Qaeda itself. Uh, Al-Qaeda is, is small uh, and limited and has been violating Islam and international law and should be limited to there and should be fought on those grounds. And we should not expand the problem by losing the majority of Muslims when, when you see uh, policy makers or analysts calling for the targeting of Muslims, then you are trying to expand the problem and you are trying to make problem with, with, with people who are your friends or at least they are not your enemy. Uh, even calling these people jihadists. I know that uh, some talking heads would like to use the word jihadist because it's a foreign word. Uh, they, they appear to be like uh, educated and they want to impress people. But I think this is a big mistake. Uh, these people who, who kill innocent people, Muslims and non-Muslims, who use illegitimate means uh, to achieve their goals, these are not jihadists, they are terrorists. And those are not mur uh, martyrs, they are murderers. So we should be very accurate in using this, this, this term, terrorist. Jihad in the Muslim world, in Muslim societies, is a mainstream terminology. We have to educate ourselves on Islam, Islamic history and terminology. When you use the word jihad, you are giving legitimacy to the terrorist because jihad could be a legitimizing title. So when you just replace terrorist with jihadists in terminology, you are losing many Muslims. So terrorists are terrorists, murderers are, are murderers, and criminals are criminals. Let's not give them legitimacy when they do their act. And I think the last question was, what would I say to the president or if any government officials contact us? I think American Muslims are a major asset to the United States. American Muslims are affluent, they're educated, uh, they love their country, they have great and deep understanding and affection to Islam and the Muslim world, and they should be our partners to communicate effectively and to, to, to bridge the gap, the growing gap, between uh, America, between the West and the Muslim world. They're the ones who speak the languages, understand the culture, and can be the best asset for our nation to fix some of our policies, to guide us. But in order to do that, they a, have to be assured that they are equal citizens, protected under the law. They're included in the, in the political process, in the consultation. And I think if they are given some positions in government or in forums, in a proactive way, I think they, they will be uh, very useful. So uh, thank you for your call, and I think uh, we as Muslim Americans, despite this difficult time, we should be positive, we should reach out to people, and we should not let sometimes the ignorance or hostility of people uh, sway us from doing what we have to do as Muslims and as citizens of this great nation. Nihad Awad, the Executive Director of the Council of American Islamic Relations, CARE.com. The letters are C-A-I-R.com if you want to find out more about the organization. Mr. Wad, thank you. Thank you. Coming up, we'll have a discussion about health care, but first here is a look at the week's political stories through the pen and the ink. Ban. Ban. Washington Journal continues. It was on Thursday that the president spoke in a press conference addressing the issues concerning December and the attempted uh, terrorism attack uh, from that flight to New York. Here's some of what he had to say. And that's why we must communicate clearly to Muslims around the world that Al-Qaeda offers nothing except a bankrupt vision of misery and death, including the murder of fellow Muslims, while the United States stands with those who seek justice and progress. To advance that progress, we've sought new beginnings with Muslim communities around the world, one in which we engage on the basis of mutual interest and mutual respect and work together to fulfill the aspirations that all people share, to get an education, to work with dignity, to live in peace and security. That's what America believes in. That's the vision that is far more powerful than the hatred of these violent extremists. 
Joining us now is Nihad Awad. He is the uh, executive director for the Council of American Islamic Relations. Uh, from the president's statement talking about new beginnings and, and, and related subjects, where does the government need to go as far as what happened in December and from heading on out from there? Well, good morning. Thanks good morning. for having me first. Uh, uh, when I saw the president speak on that, uh, I felt assured that the president has it together. Um, the president acknowledged that the information about this uh, terrorist was in the system, uh, but was not acted on.